Welcome back, everyone, to... Yeah. Welcome back, everyone, to the 3v3 Renegade Tournament recap stream, and I remain your host, Dominic. Of course, we're on to the bronze match. There's Team Exgon versus Team Mumble. Well, actually, it's kind of a GBC team now, honestly. It's... F FFC quit after the speed battle match because... I can't say I blame them. That was a pretty silly match. So, Hokumoku has replaced them. Me and King, this is actually two GBC players and one... One XCOM. Whatever. It's Team XCOM. Droppy is the XCOM rep on this Team XCOM. So let's go. Yeah. So Droppy with the Ampod Factory. Anarchid with Glint Gunships. And Hokumoku going for Spiders. This is on Lonely Oasis. So I understand the use of the Gunships and Spiders, but... Hmm. And, okay. So Team XCOM going for the squatting. Team Mumble, on the other hand, not yet. Saniac going for the Shieldbot Factory. Kind of proxy. Knedible, somewhat proxy. Cloaky Factory. And Gunships in the back our Wesley's Domain. So, yeah, Team Mumble hasn't really gone for the squad thing, but it doesn't seem to be that unpopular. I mean, more from Team XCOM than Team Mumble. I guess they were so impressed by how it worked with their opponents that they beat, but still decided, you know, it's a pretty cool idea. But no, it looks like it's not going to be Hokomoko. Oh, I see. Okay, going for a nice little coordinated drop. That makes sense. Actually, a really good reason to go for that kind of squad behavior is this drop setup. So, Scallop Drop coming in here from Team XCOM. That's... What targets does it have? I mean, it can go over the Shieldbot Factor here, and that's exactly where it is going. And there's not a whole lot to defend it, either. There are a couple bandits, but really nothing else. And while I would kind of like to see the back lines be hit, this should work fine. Drop the Scallops in there. Get rid of the Lotus. Get rid of the, me get rid of the Metal Extractor. Get rid of the Factory. There we go! Those Scallops doing their job! Factory go down pretty quick. Though, the Harpy being here is going to be a bit of a problem. Like, the Scallops can sort of deal with it, but not effectively. So, the Karns coming in there should be able to... If they can pick up the Scallops, get them in. Get them into the gunship plant. That will be game. They get in that back line. There's not much Wesley can do. The Harpies are there to deal with it. And if they can get rid of one of the Karns, maybe... No, the Karens are reasonably healthy right now. So, it would take a bit more damage to take out the Karens with the Harpies. And there aren't enough Harpies to really deal with it, and the Vadger's gonna go down in a sec as well. Cannibal is going for a bit of a revenge strategy here in the back, but it's not gonna be enough. The Gunship Plants... The Gunship Plant is under heavy fire. And yeah, Scallops should be able to get rid of it, so that's one more factory down. At the same time, Cannibal trying to stop some of Hokomoko's proxy approaches. But honestly, that's more of a distraction that Hokomoko is, is building up there. So, hey, two factories down for the price of a few Scallops and a few Karens. At least they got rid of the gunship plants. As you can see, Droppy already pointing out, Hey, don't bother with anti-air. We're good. We can just deal with the Harpy, and that's it. Same time, though, Kinetable going for the Knight here. Really trying to go for a big push onto Hokomoko's base, because that's... I mean, it's right there. They might as well. The same time, though, the Shield Black Factory having to be rebuilt. Not a whole lot of build power available to do it, either. And the gunship factory isn't even being attempted to be rebuilt. It's just, instead... Wesley going for the rover assembly, upgrading their command at the same time. Just, they have the spare metal, they might as well. So at this point, Kinetable is the only one really managing to get a nice forward position. At this point, though, Kinetable, like, at this point, though, it's not that uneven. I mean, a lot of damage is dealt to the factory, sure, and that's the main thing here. Economically, it's not too bad. But that's not really the, really the problem here. The problem here is that after about two or three minutes, Team Mumble is going to have a massive advantage. Sorry, Team XCOM, rather, is going to have a massive advantage. Team Mumble, on the other hand, they're still rebuilding. All they really have is a Cloaky Factory, and otherwise, they've got nothing. And granted, that's not a huge problem, though, because if they put enough build power into the Cloaky Factory, they can still get enough units, get into the Phantoms up, which would be useful against any heavy units that come up. Getting a few Rock... Getting a few Ronin would be amazing, I guess, the Spiders coming in here. Or even a few Glaze... Like, a Glaive Ronin mix just to get rid of basically everything Hokomoko is building. That would still be a good idea. Or just get some anti-air. I mean, Gremlins aren't the best anti-air in the game, but they're still something. So I don't know. It seems a little bit weird. But no, the focus instead is getting all the factories built up, and the rover assembly is back up. So at the very least, some fencers can be built. But the question, of course, becomes, what do you do from here? Because Hokomoko... Or, like, not Hokomoko. Drop the Anarchy team... 
dropping Anarchy Squad, getting that duck support, just make sure Hokomoko doesn't have to worry about glaives. Nice teamwork there. At the same time, another drop is coming in, and it looks like it is going to be on the shield... No, not the shield factory, on the rover factory. Bit of a risky strategy here, because if they get too close to the fencers, the fencers will stop them. The fencers actually will be able to nail a few shots in. It won't be able to do too much, but at least does scout things coming out. And the crasher is up in time. That will be a problem for this drop, at least for future drops. This specific drop is fine. But the problem is now the Karen's are going to go down. The scallops have nowhere else to go. But they are able to get rid of the factory, able to get rid of some metal extractors, and still put that pressure down. At the same time, the Nimbus also putting a lot of pressure on here. So, really, what can Team X or what can Team Mumble do? And the answer to me is try to really focus on that Cloaky Bot factory. But at this point, they're thinking just resign, just throw in the towel and be done with it. And that's exactly what they do. Very nice drops coming in here from Team XCOM. Turning that, like, really turning that squad into, or squad function into an extremely effective tool. The entire time, I mean, the thing is, they, they weren't that far ahead economically, especially at first. They just had a great couple drops. So, Team XCOM managing to take that without too much trouble. So now we're going to be moving on to the finals in a couple seconds. That'll be Team Pluck versus Team 400 fighting for the top spot. Because, yeah, this was supposed to be best of three, but Team Mumble apparently forfeited after this match. So, this is the result for the bronze match. But, of course, the finals are still the finals. The finals are still yet to come. So, I'll have that final series in a couple seconds once I get that sorted. So, stay tuned for that.